Okay. Uh, thank you for joining us today to this interesting webinar. Today we'll talk about how embedded analytics contributes to increase revenue in your products. This session was originally intended for ISV who are exploring this issue, but it's also suitable for any organization that considering inter considering integrating analytics in its business application on a web portals. So what's planned for us today? I know your time is precious, so I'll start with a few words about the challenge that we like to solve with you and tell you very briefly about Click for those of you who do not know us that well. Right after me, PZ will demo how simple and effective it is to embed analytics in your apps with Click Analytic Platform. And then we save the best for the end. Thomas Saar, a VP Products at Briefcom, will share with us on the use of Click's platform as their integrated embedded white label BI solution. He'll expand a little on technological value and, and the reason for choosing Click, but more important on the business value that this solution provides them. I expect it to be very interesting. Well, my name is Ophir Isaac. I'm the VP of sales at Click Israel for the last five years and over 20 years in the software industry in our local paddle. At the end of today's session, we'll share with you the presentation and the recording, so you do not need to take a screenshot. If you have any question, feel free to use the Q&A button below, and we'll do our best to answer in real time. If needed, we will allocate extra time at the end of the session to elaborate as needed. I like to start with a short story about two Israelis who went to a post-army trip to India. As part of that trip, they decided to take a few days to to the jungle. On the second day of that hike, when they are in the depth of the jungle, they suddenly spot a tiger running toward them from the distance. So naturally, they started to run as fast as they could toward the other way. Suddenly, one of them stopped, sat down, and took a running shoes out of his backpack. While he changes his sandals, his friend asked him, do you think that with these shoes you'll be faster than the tiger? So the guy answered him, I don't have to be faster than the tiger, I just have to be faster than you. And, and that is the essence of our session today. Do you have your business running shoes that allow you to lead the competition or grow your business? A study who published two years ago showed that competitive advantage found to be one of the top three reasons why companies choose to embed analytics. The other three reasons were increasing the revenue or market share. Today, it's a known fact that there is a direct and strong connection between data analytics capabilities and advance this goal. So now the question arises, how do you do it? Are you reinventing the wheel or using the best available and affordable platform? On the, or in other words, would you build or buy? Let's think about it for a moment. When you approach providing an embedded BI solution within your product, you need to consider an endless consideration. You need a, to have a flexible architecture for efficient and satisfactory of data provisioning to your customer. You need to have a scalable performance for low distribution or handle a peak requirement and for elasticity for future growth or decrease if needed. You must deal with security, authentication, permission, and in some cases with governance as well, that could be a big headache. You'll probably have to deal with mobile support on native web. Your developer will probably ask you to choose a solution that can provide API integration, advanced data preparation capabilities, and then business consideration need to be taken into account as well, like forward and backward maintenance and support, total cost of ownership, time to value, and so on. At the end of the day, your needs are greater for you to decide to build a solution on your own. This is why I choose to present this slide as an iceberg. Some of our partners have chosen Click as their embedded analytics solution after trying to develop on their own. What they saw before as their required investment to provide a BI solution with their product was found to be the tip of the iceberg. At the end, it was a lot deeper than what they uh, first thought. They realized that it gets deeper and deeper as time passed by and it took them away from their co-activities. 
Now on a normal day, you would expect me to exhaust you with a series of slides that show you how Click does it best. And believe me, I have a few. But as I said before, I value your time. And I really believe that the speaker after me will do a better job on that. So I would like to take a two minutes to introduce you with Click, especially for those who don't know us that well. Well, Click is an American software company considered to be one of the oldest in the, in the global BI market and well-known with more than 15,000 customers and more than 1,000 OEM partners. As far as we know, Click is currently has the largest development team in the BI industry and the largest BI community in the world. Click was again nominated this year as a leader in the Gather Magic Quadrant for 10 years in a world in this class. Click Israel, with 17 years of experience in Israel, we are managed to answer the needs of more than 1,400 satisfied customers and more than 100 OEM partners. We are proud to be the only vendor in Israel that operates support center in Hebrew, which managed to close to the satisfaction of our customer 95% of the calls. According to STKI, we are the leading BI company in Israel with 35% market share. And we are also widely recognized by our customer for excellency. These are some of our OEM partner and each of them have a good story to tell about us and about our solution. That's it on my side. Due to time constraint, I will take a question in the Q&A. At this point, I honor to invite Przemek Zabludowski that will take you on a short journey where you'll see how the magic is done using Click Analytic Platform. Shemek? Yes, good morning, everyone. Uh, before I start, uh, let me just kind of go over the probably toughest part of this uh, presentation. Uh, Ophir, can you stop sharing your screen, please, so I can take over? Um, sure. Which is which is uh, which is basically how how to uh, how to you know how to pronounce my name. It's probably the toughest thing you're going to see to uh, going to hear about today. Um, so actually, it's, it's you know when you when you see it first time, you you get scared. And believe me, this is a short version. Uh, Ophir did a great job here. Uh, because he knows the algorithm. So for Hebrew speaking uh, people, it's, you know, for, for those of you who speak Hebrew, and I, I would assume that it's majority of you on the call, it's pretty easy because you take a word for sun, which is Shemesh, right? And then you just take out the, the last letter and you, you kind of, uh, you exchange it with a K, you change it with a K and you end up with Shemek, which is very, very good. It's close enough. Uh, or you can do like, um, if you still, it, it is too, 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 uh, too difficult, which again, I don't mind. You can just, you can just go with P or PZ, uh, just like, uh, just like um, Ophir did in the beginning here. All right, guys. So let me take you on a, on a journey here, about 30 minutes of, of um, kind of a journey, starting with, you know, building a ClickSense application, which is uh, an application is, is an entity that kind of an, is, is, an, is, is a base. Um, thing in click it's 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 where people analyze data in uh, then we'll take this app I'll show you quickly how you can you can uh, analyze the uh, um, information and get insights out of your data using that app and then we'll embed it it will take about half an hour and then I'll hand it over to Tomer who's going to really hit the nail and show you guys how it how it looks in reality uh, with an actual successful OEM partner of click who, who's been using that technology for for some time now and, and how they're, you know, reaping the benefits of using click click uh, technology in their own product. Okay, so let's assume I'm a, I'm a CRM vendor um, and I'm just, you know, my goal is to build some analytics for my customers. So here I have a very simple database here, you know, very simple uh, classic scenario where I have a relational data uh, in some database tables. Again, for, for sake of simplicity, it's an SQL server with two tables. Uh, you know, one is the uh, customers, another one is my sales data um, um, table. So what I'll do here is I'll log into ClickSense. And again, I'm already logged in, uh, but I'll do it again now. This is a single sign-on situation here. So I'm, you know, I'm, I'm using my local active directory here. So I'm, I actually am, you know, I am signed in as PZB, which is my username. 
And I'm a, I'm a professional type of user, so I kind of develop, the developer. So I end up in a place which is called my workspace, which is a hub. And what is also very important here is that Click is 100% um, based on a browser. I mean, the experience from an end user is 100% browser-based. There's no fat client. There's nothing I need to install. Everything I will be doing, both for creating stuff and also, uh, uh, you know, uh, then, um, uh, kind of a using the analytics, you know, exploring the data, getting the insights out of it will be in my browser. Um, everything happens on the server. Obviously, there is a server in the back end. So, you know, I'm connected to my server. So what I do here is I'll create a, uh, a click, a, a quick, uh, uh, quick sales app. Um, so w w what this, what this app is, you know, is is composed is really composed of three layers. And again, this is the entity in Click, which is the basic entity for for analyzing data. The the the, the three layers that I need in an app in order to you know to 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 make it work is the first one is a script, uh, and a script is there to uh, load my data and you know do any kind of a required transformation of this data. So um, it's very important, Click has their own kind of, we have our own ET <clears throat> extract and transform. We don't have the load part, but you know, people would say we have an ETL that is part of the, of, uh, of the product and it's there embedded. It, we, you, know, it, it, you don't need to get any special outside third party or, or external component. It is an integral piece of it. Now, the beautiful thing is that you can use that script to really do a lot of cool things. But if you don't want to use the script, you can do stuff visually. You, you, you can get started very quickly visually, but, but mo most, 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 more, most advanced cases, more advanced cases, you would be using the script. And, and again, very important, it's there and, and it's part of the product. So um, what I'll do here is I create connection to my, uh, to my uh, SQL server. As you can see, I do have, um, I do have um, kind of an inbox, uh, out of the box connectors here to, to um, all the, the all the standard databases, you know, I can I can use files as well. I also have web connectors, so I, I can connect to data sources like you know, uh, Facebook, Twitter, you know, Microsoft Dynamics, CRM, and and some other here. So you know, I do get about 50, 60 connectors out of the box that I can use. Uh, you can use and click. But in my case, I'm just going to connect to my local instance of um, of SQL Server. So again, it, it's right here on my local host. The database name is CRM. Then I'll provide my username, my password. Obviously, you know, I have to provide all these details in, in, able to, in, in order to be able to access the database. So we, obviously this is or, you know, secured. Um, you know, um, we will not be able just to, uh, just to break into the database as, if, if I don't have the rights to do it. So I will create my connection here and, you know, what happens now, I will be able to use the data from, from this connection. So I will just, you know, kind of visually explore the data in, in, in this database. So um, I will kind of connect to, um, to the database. You know, I can see the list of my tables. And again, I want to use customers and sales data. And here at that point, I can already do some transformations using, using the kind of GUI here. I, could, uh, I can decide potentially which columns to use. I can do some filtering using you know, like a classic where statement if I wanted to. But in my case, I'll make it simple. I'm just going to insert that into the script. And now what I'll do is I will load the data. Because what happens now is Click will create a second layer of an application for me, which is the model. And this is where Click is so different than all the BI tools that we have out there. Click has their own in-memory associative engine that allows users to now really explore the data in the memory of my server. So I will not be running any queries against the database or any other source, I will be doing everything here in the memory of a server. What does it mean? Well, that means obviously that is going to be super fast because access to RAM is so much faster than access to, you know, any other source that I, that I might have to, uh, you know, classic uh, database, for example, it's uh, basically 10, 10 to a hundred times, at least 
by um, you know by by a, a one magnitude faster than uh, accessing you know a database here. So again, here I'm still loading some data. So as you could see, some of you might have might have seen. I have about a quarter of a million of records. Obviously, this is running on my little kind of a server here. We could have up to hundreds of millions, even billions of records hit my uh, memory of my server, and I could still use. Um, uh, you know, use it in a way I'll be using this in a second. So now what happens is I have my, my uh, tables here again. Uh, here's, here's that uh, little kind of a GUI that allows me to kind of in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a very visual way associate the data. Again, we don't create relations, we create associations in the data. So what it's trying to do is trying to understand how well this data kind of matches together. And if, if there is something that I could use, and again, in here, it is smart enough to, to know that you know there are there are uh, there is some uh, there is some data that actually fit, fits each other. So there there's data in there that looks like it might be um, associated. And again, if I do I do know that my customers my my my, my sales data is kind of a related associated with the customer ID. There's a customer ID here and there. So. Click kind of went through the data so that it's similar, and now it's saying, you know what, this looks like a good, uh, like a good association, and I will now, I will now again create that association in the memory of the server, and going forward, all this data will be, you know, associated to each other. Now the beautiful thing is that each of this table is really a separate entity, so I could basically load data from as many sources as I want, and as long as there's some kind of an association, I can actually use it. I can actually associate it. I can actually have this seen as one big data model. So again, data now gets reloaded. And after this is done, I will not be touching my data source um, anymore. And everything that is going to be happening here is going to be happening in the memory of my server. Okay, so now I have the first layer, which is the script, and a second layer, which is the model. What I'll do now is I'll create some insights for my users. So here I'll start with what we call an insights advisor, which is, which is a tool that allows me in a, in, in a very intelligent way to create some insights. So it has an AI built in. So what I'll do here is I will actually allow Click to generate some insights for me uh, without me really, really knowing that data. So what Click does is it tries to look at the data and tries to see what might be interested, what might be interesting for me. And it kind of comes up with some suggestions of charts, uh, that I could use in my in my in my UI. So, for example, here it says, "Why don't you look at some of sales revenue?" Well, that makes sense. I can add it to my sheet, where I will be, where my users will be able to analyze it further in a more visual way. It also says, "Why don't you look at the, the, the you know distribution of some of sales revenue, which is sales revenue per country?" Makes sense. A map, something I'd like to also have. I'll add it to my sheet. It's there now uh, in that. Uh, in that, um, in the GUI, in, in that sheet. Now, what I also have here is, for example, I have a chart here showing me, you know, some kind of distribution of, uh, sorry, comparison of revenue and gross profit per product name. Well, you know, this is nice. I, I like it, but maybe I'd like to make some changes here. Maybe I'd like to not see the, the product name, but maybe I'd like to see uh, you know, maybe the product subcategory only. And again, what happens now is Click says, all right, I learned something from you. Should I use it in the future? I will say yes. And now Click, what we'll do is it will know that a product subcategory is a dimension, sales revenue is a measure, sales gross profit is also a measure. And again, I will add it to my sheet for, for, um, for um, so, so users can then analyze it in a more governed fashion. Now, what if I don't have something here? What if I'd like to see something that is not here on this uh, suggestion? So for example, what if I wanted to see, you know, sales revenue per, you know, product category and product subcategory? Well, let's try to ask a question. And uh, let's give it a try here. Show sales revenue by product category and product subcategory. Well, almost, almost there. My pronunciation wasn't perfect, but if I don't, if something doesn't work, I can always kind of, you know, add it here uh, using the interactive kind of a uh, editor. So again, I can ask a question using my voice, but I can also just kind of type it in. And now I do have my table that I can add to my sheet again uh, to complete 
um, at that specific sheet. Now, what happens is, again, this way of exploring data is available for my users. So later on, they would be able to ask any questions they want, including filtering interactive uh, filtering data. So if I say, for example, in China, you know, I would be able to actually you know, narrow this information to a specific territory. So very powerful feature that allows users to ask questions interactively, both during definition of dashboards, but also when they actually then explore the information. Let me now go to my sheet. So again, my sheet has been built using that kind of a drag and drop, uh, sorry, that feature of adding it from an inside advisor. And here I can start, you know, really playing with the look and feel and again, I'll, 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 I'll let Tomer show you how much you can do with that, how much you can white label it. Um, I'll just focus on, on, on very basic things. So for example, again, if I don't like something here, so if I, you know, if I'd rather have this not as a table, but maybe, you know, maybe, um, uh, maybe as a tree map, I can just kind of drag and drop it, obviously, I can convert it, and now I have my tree map. If I want to add something new, um, you know, let's say I will go to a new sheet here. And if I now want to add something new to that sheet, um, I can either use one of my visualizations that I have here. And we, you know, we ship with lots of different visualizations here that you can use. Uh, but if you just want to, you know, kind of let click help you out with building something that might make sense, well, you just kind of drag and drop stuff onto a canvas. So what I'll do here is I will, you know, uh, uh, I will just drag a sales order method, which is a channel, my sales channel, then I'll add my sales revenue here. And, you know, click kind of figures out that it's a dimension and a measure and builds a bar chart here uh, for me. So now what happens, let's say I'm done with building that very, very first prototype. What is super important at that moment is I am ready to analyze the data. So, it, and if I now click Australia here, what is so cool about click is that all those visualizations are auto wired and I don't need to do anything to wire those together. So if I now say, okay, Australia, what if I now just look at major appliances? As you can see, all this refreshes and shows me data that is only relevant to my current, um, uh, current uh, selection uh, kind of a flow. And it affects both all the sheets in my application, not just that one, but if I now go direct, you know, now I will be looking at data for major appliances in Australia, in direct channel, very, very powerful, very quick. You know, you don't need to then figure out what is connected to, to, to what, you have those charts really working together in a model that gives you an overall view of the data that, uh, that you're looking at. Now, what is super cool now is that if I work on, you know, if I keep working about 20 minutes more or so, I will probably end up with something, something like this. Um, like a you know app that was already kind of a uh, contains uh, a bit more styling, uh, you know contains a uh, uh, some more uh, visualizations. So this is where you know I can I can really then deploy it from from development, publish it, it to production, and my users can now explore this again either using the the, the, the questions uh, that that uh, kind of a natural language or using the kind of classic. Uh, a way of exploring the data of data exploration like I'm doing here. I'm looking at my sales versus margin. You know, I can I can kind of lasso things here. You know, I also can do drill downs. But again, in click, that is not very important. It is not needed. Sometimes you need to build drill downs. You need to build hierarchies. In click, everything is connected to everything. It's associated. So I can start in any point and now say, all right, let me just look at China for those uh, for those models. Very, very important thing, something that you don't get um, out of the box um, or at all with other tools. And what's also very, uh, what, is, what, is, what is the result of this is when you do it, you get those visual hints coming to you as, as a user. You get those important colors that show you the, the, what is going on with the data. And, and I will quickly explain to you because there's four colors. And if you understand them, you're the master of click. The four colors of click are kind of displayed here in those, in those list boxes and those filters here. So the first one is green. Green shows me the current selection. So I'm looking at accessories in my list of, of my product categories. The other one is, you know, it's white. It shows me the values that are associated in some way with my current selection. So in my current selections, I can see that I sold accessories 
actually misc accessories within accessories in China in all these three channels. And again, this is something what all BI tools will show you. But what's super important here is that we go further. We don't just show data that is associated or that is possible to be drilled in further. We show you something that is not associated. And first of all, we show you values that we call alternative. And they're here in white gray, uh, sorry, light gray. So what I'm saying here is, although I'm looking at China, I visually see here, see here that other countries that I might be looking at if I wanted, meaning the countries where I had sales and accessories and miscellaneous accessories are those, you know, um, uh, light gray countries. Very, very cool because many times you will just see China in your list and nothing else if you were to do a drill down a classic BI tool. Here, however, is the most powerful color. It's the dark gray. That shows me values that are completely non-associated with my current selection. So again, I'm looking at China, MISC accessories, accessories. Here I see the three sales guys that sold those products. And here I see the ones that have not sold that product. And again, people you know, kind of buy things with their eyes. We, we, we tend to be much more kind of focused on explicit information rather than implicit. Obviously, if I had three sales only here in that list and didn't see that in other tools, I would have figured out why are why only three sales sell these products. But imagine you have lists of hundreds of thousands of, of, of uh, elements. By seeing the, ex the color here very explicitly, you get a very, very powerful visual cue. How to react on this, you know, how to take the next steps. Uh, maybe I can, uh, you know, maybe I can do is I can create a bookmark here, what we call um, or like a like you know a bookmark basically something that will point to that se uh, selection uh, and that dashboard going forward. So I would say you know interesting sales situation, right? And I would just create it. And then let's say tomorrow, if I go back to my office, you know I leave for the night. I go back tomorrow. I can open that specific bookmark. I can share that bookmark with others as well, so so we can continue the conversation on the data now. I have built my app, all right? And now I want to embed it into a third-party kind of a um, third-party UI. Now, um, how do I do it? Again, very easy. There are a couple of ways, few ways to do it. First one, I just can embed the whole kind of a uh, interface here in an iframe, right? The whole client, as we call it. Very simple. A lot of people do it this way. Now, if that's something that you don't fancy that much, you, you, can, you, you can embed a specific sheet. So that specific sheet using this very simple tool that will you know, show me the ID of that sheet, will show me some, uh, will show me some, um, um, you know, some um, options that I can have here to kind of a, um, uh, let's say allow interaction or, or not. You know, maybe I can use a theme here. So because ClickSense can be themed, so we can use different type of fonts, colors, Again, Tomer will show you this in a much, uh, in a much uh, um, kind of a touchable way. And maybe a bookmark I want to apply. If I like it, I can just copy that iframe or I can open it in a, um, you know, in a separate window here to preview. And here I am, it's an iframe actually, preserved selections because I'm still the same user. Um, and, and I can, you know, I can get this in and I can just put it into my, I can just embed it into my application. Uh, now, if I want to just take, single dash, a single object, the same thing. I can just embed that specific chart using, you know, again, put, turning some parameters on. Again, here I will have, for example, a different theme with different colors. And again, I can open here just, just to preview it, or I can copy the iframe um, source code. Here I am with this single visualization. The beautiful thing is it is still click. So I can still click around, I can make selections. You know, it will still flex. It will still, you know, be 100% uh, kind of a interactive. And and the funny thing is that that will obviously 100% uh, allow me to kind of a continue the the um, the interaction. And even if you could see here, that two um, th that two dashboards here, uh, you know, I embedded them separately. They're still they're still connected to each other. Meaning, I can still have that kind of going in um, in a way that I might have in two different iframes still talking to each other, still kind of a preserving that state. Now, what if I go, want to go further? What if I want to take this and, you know, I want to embed it using, um, 
uh, using diffs because I want to be a bit more tighter with my integration. So here I'll show you a, a quick tool called Dev Hub, which allows you to explore multiple multiple tools that we have in Click um, that um, kind of a, expose our APIs because Click ground up was built with APIs. What everything I've been doing so far with my web browser client was invoking APIs on the Click site, and you guys can do the same from your own code. I'll start with a simple thing. I'll do a, a click, a kind of quick integration into a, 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 a custom UI uh, mashup. So I'll just I'll just create a mashup here. I'll just call it uh, you know just a test. I'll create a template. And again, template is nothing else but a provided uh, HTML kind of a um, 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 file and a, a, a few JavaScript files that I that I'll show you this in a second here. That allows me to kind of a quickly. In a, in, a, in a very, very simple and, and dirty way to create my first kind of a, uh, uh, you know, template of the visualizations and how they will fit into my UI. You can create your own templates. This is just an HTML file. This is actually a bootstrap here. So since Click is responsive, uh, uh, which I'll show you in a second now, if I now, you know, if I now make my browser smaller, obviously this will, this will try to, you know, this will try to work in a, um, in a responsive manner. So this will be, if I use something like Bootstrap, um, definitely this will still work in my responsive uh, setup. And all I'll do here is again, HTML file, just simple, a few placeholders here with a special, special class QV placeholder that allows me now to using a preview here, you know, and uh, uh, kind of a, just drag and drop my visualizations onto a canvas. And what happens now is those will be embedded into that that specific template, um, all it does here really, and I'll show this in a second, is that it modifies this little JavaScript file because this is the heart of this, of this integration of this, um, um, of how this divs are integrated uh, or how visualizations are integrated through a div here. All we do here is we we just invoke a few click APIs. Uh, we open an app with a specific ID. We, we get a specific object with an ID and I showed you how you can get the object ID there from the GUI. Um, and we put that in a specific placeholder. So now in the end, I end up with, with actually a click, uh, you know, a set of click visualizations that will be embedded into my UI. And if I work on this a little bit more, and again, maybe 20, 15, 20 more minutes more, I will most likely, you know, end up with something like, like this. Which is already a, a kind of a working mashup with a few more uh, with a few more uh, functionalities. For example, here through you through our APIs, I, I take my um, uh, I get my bookmarks. Uh, I can even create one, or I can retrieve them. And again, as you can see, this is your I mean your this is a, a custom UI. It's not click. It, it's just using our it's just using our uh, APIs to actually interact with the data. So if I click clear all, I actually made a my, uh, clear the selections that I made before again using the same user. Here are some buttons here that I'm you know I can kind of switch quickly between the channels. And here are some visualizations. Again, this is a table that I build myself uh, from the data. So again, just an HTML uh, table that I'll I'll show you this in a second how this is built here. Just uh, you know, a few lines of code to retrieve uh, retrieve the data here using this object. This um, um, that allows me then to to you know kind of put that in into a classic HTML table. But what is uh, what is the most important? Uh, what is the most interesting object here? Actually, is this one. This table is something that is not in my in my um, is not in my application. Right. This was. If you kind of looked at my app that I kind of went through those two those two um, sheets, there was there was no table there. This table was created on the fly. I actually created that in my code, and it's actually right here. Very simple. What is it? Ten lines of code, fourteen lines of code. I just define the type of visualization. I say, okay, what will be my um, dimension, my measure? I you know add some title here. I just uh, provide some additional options, and I end up with a table now. If I don't like it, and for example, I'd like to see it as a bar chart, right? All I need to do is I just change this one parameter. And now if I, if I, if I save it and view it again, if I didn't make a, you know, a typo here, I should, see, I should see a bar chart. And again, this is 100% working like 
It should. It's not a read-only. It's 100% clickable, selectable. I can still do all the stuff I would be doing in a classic, classic UI. So again, very powerful features that allow me to really integrate deeply. Now, that's not all. I can go even deeper. There is a tool here called Engine API Explorer that allows me to explore those APIs that are available to me as a user, um, as a developer, sorry. So um, here what I'll do is I will uh, we'll connect to our, uh, you know, our quick sales app. And um, if we just open it here in our, uh, in our uh, web browser as well, uh, let's say again, you know, I'll show you a few, a few capabilities. We have some selections again uh, that we've made. What I can do here is I can actually, again, and I showed this in, in, in the mashup a little bit, but now I can show you this actually works in a code here. I could, I can explore what methods, what API methods. And again, this is JavaScript or REST. This is actually a REST call that I'll be making here. I can actually take, and uh, I can actually uh, clear all my selections. Here's a clear all um, uh, method. So it's cool because it kind of creates the call. It's a JSON that I need to execute. If I execute it, right? And if I now go back to my app, the selections are gone, right? So it does work. Now I can, I can do more. I can actually interact with the app, not only as a user, but as a developer, I can actually create things and I can destroy things using you know, declarative language here. So what I could do, and again, um, we'll do it quickly here now, is we can, I, I'll show you this on an example of creating a connection. So I, what I will do is I create a connection here. Um, and again, it's cool. Again, I'll get all the parameters that need to be invoked and need to be provided. Here's obviously a documentation here. I'll drag it over here so we don't have to skip. Here's a, uh, we have a very detailed documentation for that. So you can actually understand what needs to be done. And here I can, well, I'll, I'll go simple. I'll just create a simple connection to my file system. So I, I know I need to provide a name An ID will be provided to me if, I, if it's successful. The type is folder, and then I need to provide the path. So again, let's give it a, let's give it a try here. So I'll just provide, again, I'll put a date so you guys know that I'm not, it's 11.38, right? API connection. And then uh, the connection string, I'll just point it to my C drive and the type I'll put folder and I'll execute it. Now, if everything is good, I will get a connection ID in return. I'll keep it for a second, but to prove you that it did work, I'll go back here and I will refresh that page from a web browser and everything, if everything went well, I will actually see that on the list here of my connection. Let's give it a second. It was fe it's fetching the connections from the server, um, but it should be here if everything went right. Now, the powerful thing is that using this, and there it is, right? So the powerful thing is that using that APIs, you can do everything, including creating apps, creating you know, uh, moving them to what we call streams, which provide security. Like here, I have my work screen and my sales app screen. So you can really, really go deep with that in terms of, of how much automation you can provide. And I'll, I'll try to show you this for those of you who are running like, you know, SaaS environments, you can't do stuff with your hands. You know, you need to, you need to automize things. So I'll show you a demo that is also available for you to explore at integration.click.com. Um, what I'll do is I work, I'll, I'll walk through a simple process of kind of mimicking a, a, an app provisioning click sense apps and users. So your system or my system, SaaS system provisioning uh, SaaS uh, users um, uh, in, in, to, in, in click sense. So here again, I create some fictitious users and I will want my code to for each fictitious customer that I'm provisioning to give them a sales app you know, and my first template run keeper, whatever that is, I will go to step three. What I have here is a B4 scenario. Before I run this, I will have one stream. So one of those streams here, this is a stream with a, um, with a, with my template applications, right? So all I have my, are my template applications. Now that when I, when I click start, what will happen is each of these templates applications, and I can see the API calls actually being invoked here. Each of these API uh, of this template application is going to be copied 
Let's say there's an ID in the script that's going to be replaced, maybe an ID of a customer in the database. And for each of these customers, I will create a copy of the template. I will move, oh, my core actually, not me, will move this to a stream for this customer. And in the end, I will end up in a situation that each of my customers has a separate stream. So they, can, they can't look into each other's data, obviously, because it's super important in, in those uh, SaaS scenarios when you want to have segmentation. So right here, I have it. In the end, I end up with, four streams, a template, and each stream per customer. And in each of those streams, I have you know, two copies of those apps. One, both of them I provision, but with the data specific to the customer. So if I now just want to say, all right, I will want to log in as a specific user, you know, I will actually be now in that app in that stream for that specific user. And then obviously depending on which model I want to, which in integration I want to use, whether it's, you know, accessing the whole, um, the whole client, or I just would like to integrate it using the sheet with menu. So a single iframe, or if I want to, again, if I want to use the, um, uh, the div one, very nice thing to explore by the way yourself, but you can see how powerful it is. You actually have the whole recipe here for running a very sophisticated provisioning scenario with your SaaS platform, if you have one. All right, with that, I'm on top of my 30 minutes actually. So I'll stop sharing now. I'll hand it over to Tomer, who's gonna show you how well you can take this whole technology and integrate it into your product to create something that is kind of a, um, you know, that, that, that creates an unity between your product and analytics and is an integral part of the experience that your users might get when they use your product. So, uh, Tomer, um, you're up next. Okay. Hello, everybody, and, uh, and good morning, and thanks for inviting me. Um, I will start off with, the, uh, with, a few, um, with a few slides explaining what the Briefview product is. It's important to understand why and how we did the, the integration, and then I will dive into the, the what we built uh, using ClickSense. Um, so Briefcam, a little bit about the company. Briefcam for uh, the last two and a half years is uh, part of the Canon family. Um, it was a uh, third acquisition that Canon uh, did in, in our industry of video and uh, video surveillance, actually. Uh, after Milestone and Axis, Milestone, the VMS company, and Axis, the, the, uh, the uh, network. Excuse, excuse me, Tomer, if, you're, if you want to be showing something, it, we don't see your screen just yet. Sorry, but yes, thank you, thank you. Actually, uh, it's a good point, and I uh, do not see a share button actually here. Should be in in the Zoom webinar yes. screen. I know. Uh, yes. uh, okay. There you go. Thank you, and apologies for that. Right. So, um, so we are part of the Canon family uh, for the for the past uh, two and a half years. Uh, what what the, our, our customers are divided uh, mainly into two kinds of customers. The first one is law enforcement, uh, from police who safe in small cities, all up uh, uh, up the chain to federal um, uh, organizations, uh, all over all over the world. Uh, and on the right hand side, you can see also different types of enterprise verticals, such as transportation and manufacturing, education and government, and we protect. Um, um, Airport, uh, airports, or uh, or um, university campuses, hospitals, uh, and etc. Uh, specifically, in the law enforcement, uh, we serve uh, many of the known uh, police forces uh, around the globe, and also uh, in Israel, uh, most, if not all, of the law enforcement customers are uh, Brickham customers. Our product consists of three modules. The first one um, that, that, that uh, actually reflects what we do with video. We make video searchable, actionable, and quantifiable. The first uh, module is for uh, accelerating investigations. The second module is for uh, attaining situational awareness by providing alerts. And the third module that consists of CLIC um, is a module that helps drives, uh, drive operational uh, intelligence uh, with, uh, with BI. The way we do it is that we take the raw, vid raw video, um, these whole uh, hours and uh, tens and hundreds of thousands of hours of video that are recorded and produced uh, from, from many cameras, 
and we process it and extract the different objects that are there inside the video. It could be a man, it could be a woman, different kinds of vehicles, animals. We know about where they are in the scene, what colors they are, uh, what they are, what they do. Um, so we make this data structured and then we use it in our three modules, in the search, searching modules, in the actionable module, and also inside the BI or the quantified uh, module. So we, with that, I will go uh, to the demo. I, I hope that you can still see my screen on the, with the web browser here. Um, and this is Brifcan. Um, it's a, it's a web-based application um, that has the three modules right here. Let's begin um, really, quick, really quick with the modules that uh, don't include Flip, just to understand what Brifcan does here. It's important to understand later how, how we embed Clip. Uh, so I'm an investigator and I have something that I need to investigate and I have hours and hours of video that I need to investigate and find the needle in the haystack. So what I would do is get into a, a um, video that I have here uh, pre uh, already ready for me, consisting of five, five different uh, videos that are in this case very short. And let's say I'm looking for, uh, I'm looking for a person Okay, and I'm looking for a woman uh, whose, uh, whose description was given to me. On the right hand side, I have the different filters here. So I choose, let's choose a woman, click apply. And I will, and I will see all of the women here that I have in my, in my videos. Out of the 80, 867 objects, I have 81 women. Now I can further narrow down and look for women with short sleeved uh, shirt. I can also choose the color. And let's say I want a woman with short sleeve shirt, and I know that she had a, um, I know that she had a backpack. So I will click apply here, and I will get all of the women here that uh, that have a that have a, a backpack, right? Uh, another one and another one, and then I can quickly uh, I can quickly also see the original video and see how it how it played out in the context of the rest of the scene. There is my woman here with a backpack and short sleeve shirt going to, uh, to the north. Um, do you guys see my screen okay? I got the message here that something is wrong. Yes, you can see your screen well. Okay, good. All right, so let's, let's clear those filters here and try to look for something else. Let's, let's, uh, let's assume now I'm looking for a bicycle. I can also look for different cars but let's look for a bicycle. Okay, so these are all of the bicycles that I have here in my scene. And I want one that is uh, driving uh, or cycling to the right. I click apply. So now I'm narrowing further my selection. And uh, also let's choose a color. I want, uh, I want the rider or the bicycle to wear yellow. And then there I found my, my suspect here. So sometimes I don't know what I want to search for. And this is why we created what we call video synopsis. So on one of the videos, I can actually see instead of watching the entire almost two hour video, I can see a smaller, a shorter version just of eight minutes uh, showing the different objects concurrently. You can notice by seeing the timestamps here that those objects were not actually at the same time here uh, in the scene. Let me um, do this a little quicker. You can see that there are a lot of objects here. They were not together in the scene. If I choose this person, for example, that appeared at 8 p.m., the original video will look much, much emptier, right? This is the video and this is how it looked like uh, in reality. So synopsis helps me understand what happened really quick. And also here, and also here I, can, I can apply my filters and let's say I want to only look at I only want to look at private vehicles here. So I'll get a different synopsis, much shorter with less objects that can show me just the vehicles, fast, just the vehicles here uh, in my scene. Well, again, they were not in the scene together, uh, but concurrently. Um, just to show one, there are really a lot of options here in different uh, classification and search options, but just to really quick show another, uh, to show another capability here. Um, so in, in, this, uh, in this case here, I'm looking for a suspect. This is an indoor camera. And let's say I have, um, I have uh, this suspect here and I want to know where else did, did we see this, uh, this suspect. 
with respect to times two times one. Um, so I want to add this guy to the, to, the, to the face recognition filter and using face recognition, I will find all of the different occurrences of this person. Okay, this is the uh, image, which is very blurry, but still I, we were able to pick it up, to pick up his face in a, in a different uh, instance. So that's the review module, um, which uh, really it's, uh, it hurts not to show everything, um, but I have to move on. Uh, to the next module. So the next one is, uh, is respond, and this one helps me monitor uh, cameras in real time. Uh, and in order to do that, I have to create some rules. So let's say, let's look at one of the rules that I have uh, uh, created here uh, earlier. I have this thing here, and I want to get an alert every time a truck, okay, out of the different vehicles, every time just a truck is going here in that direction, as you can see here with the arrows. Right, so and I have um, other types of other types of rules here. For example, people that are aggregating in the bus stop, or um, or people who are not employees on the watch list that entered my office. Okay, I'm monitoring the office, and I want to get an alert every time somebody who is not right. The mode here is exclude some where where is not on the watch list of employees. So if I go back to the alarms, I can see that for example, these are the alerts that I received earlier. I can see that I got an alert when a truck went in that direction or a different rule when a bicycle, uh, when a cyclist uh, rode the bicycle here on the sidewalk or um, this guy here is not on the watch list. So I got an alert when we picked him up on, uh, in, the, uh, in the office. Right, or maybe other rules that I had preset every time a vehicle is performing an illegal U-turn here, right? So only the vehicles that uh, that uh, perform this uh, this uh, illegal U-turn here, and many many other examples here. All right, so this is the the first module was to review and to conduct an investigation. The second module is used uh, to get proactive alerts. And now to the interesting part. So. I have here, uh, let's just refresh the page. Sure that was going to too much time. Uh, so the first, the, the third module here is what we call the research module. And we embedded uh, ClickSense uh, as a web product. We were able to, to embed it inside of our web product without the need to re-log in with a different user, without changing the look and feel of our product. Our product is uh, a little bit dark with dark background uh, as customary to do in uh, video applications. So we wanted to preserve the same look and feel and you can recognize that this is ClickSense, but it looks completely differently. We went to the degree, the customization degree of changing the CSS files of, of ClickSense and changing the divs inside the code and actually in the distances, um, um, on top of the embedded customization that Click offers. Um, and we really made it look as if it's part of the product. You can even notice that it's not just a simple iframe. Even this row here, uh, where my mouse is dashboard sources, source groups are, uh, I, are buttons from Briefcam, and the rest of the row comes from Click, right? And this is a web application, so it served from different web, uh, web services and it looks to the user, it looks like a single experience. So what do, are we looking at here? We are looking at data that we extracted from two different cameras in a store. And we were able to count together that, that there are 3,450 visitors in those two stores. These are the, we know when they came in, when they got out. So we know the, uh, so we have the, uh, the average duration we know how, how many visitors visited in the max in the busiest hour, and then obviously the breakdown between women, women, children, where they were, how much time they spent, and it gives us really important information to look at. For example, in the bags area, I had a lot of visitors that day, over a thousand people just in the bags area, but they spent relatively less time. In the sandals area, I had just 400 people that day, but they spent considerably more time. So this, this, this object or widget here uh, shows me that uh, what's the, what the, the power of a BI tool as part of the system. There were ideas to just add 
charts and the simple simple brush to the product, but it was clear that the BI tool will give us the, uh, the utmost experience and uh, also uh, a, a very large differentiation from our competitors. No, no one else in our industry have implemented and embedded a full BI system inside, inside the product, not to mention a tier one uh, tool like Click. So because this is a BI system and because we have the entire raw data available to Click, uh, we can narrow down the search. For example, if I want to only look at the, at the main, I will just simply click main here and the graphs will change. And then I can further, uh, or let's, uh, let's remove the main selection and or maybe instead of that, I only want to see, uh, only want to see the uh, people who visited the, shop, the shoes and purses area, right? So I can see that those are only shoes and purses. The breakdown is that, those are the times, et cetera. We will also, and, and further, I can also click different objects and the, the entire um, data will narrow down automatically. As Emic said, it's, it's wired behind the scenes. Um, we are we're also able to, to embed uh, visual, uh, visual uh, layers that we have in the product by embedding an object that just brings a, an image from the, that we produce behind the scenes uh, as, as a static object. You know, for, for click, this is just an image, uh, but to the, to the user, this is a, a heat map showing what's happening, what are the common paths in this store. So they know that here on the right, where the red, red arrow is, this is where the most customers travel, and also here at the bottom. Or on the right-hand side, which are the popular items, right? So the items that are colored here with red were interacted with many times, where the items with the, that are not marked were not touched or moved uh, during the period. Moving on to a different dashboard here to show, uh, let's just reset the filters, um, to show that we can also offer embed, um, embedding external sources. Let's look at the graph here at the bottom. Um, so the, 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 um, the, line, the line chart here shows the number of shoppers. So the data comes from our video analytics engine, but the bars here show uh, the total sales in that, uh, in that store. So you can see that there is a correlation between the number of shoppers and the, uh, the volume of sales during most of the time. But you can see that here in the late evening, you can see that there are a lot of shoppers, but there is no correlation with the total number of sales, meaning that a lot of customers get into the store in those hours, but usually don't buy anything or don't buy enough. Right, and there are plenty of other examples here. Uh, using facial recognition, we can also detect when a customer visits on different days. So we can see the difference between you and returning customers. So if I saw you yesterday in the store, I don't have to know what your name is, but I compare your face to today's face. I know it's the same person. And then I know that this is a returning customer. Um, different video analytics uh, artifacts that we uh, that we made available in the data model in Click here, and then built a dashboard uh, that shows customers exactly how, how to visualize their data and how to quantify their data. Um, it's uh, COVID-19 COVID, uh, times uh, these days, so we have also introduced several features uh, for COVID-19. We introduced the ability to count people in a certain area, and we introduced the ability to detect face masks and to detect the proximity or, or, or distance between people. And we can have all of this data available inside the dashboards uh, to show very quickly to, to people that, all right, during the day, all of those are three different cameras, all right, the different lines. You can see that during the day, uh, the, average, the average distance between people was about 10 feet or 15 feet, which is okay. But here in the afternoon, there are too many people in the, in the store probably, and therefore uh, they don't keep their distance and their distance falls, average distance falls uh, to about six feet, which could be still okay. But remember, this is an average. If we can see the violations, right? We, de we define the violation here with this slider, right? And these are all, right? And, and the graph changes. So let's put it back on six feet. And these are all standard click widgets. You can see that, in this graph, for example, you can see that on five and six 
uh, in the afternoon, uh, too many people uh, violated or too, too many people violated the, the rule or the mandate that I decided, right? We wanted to, them to keep at least six, six feet uh, from each other. And we can see that too many people are close together, but mostly maybe on this green camera, which means the checkout area. Um, also face masks, okay? I can see that most of in the morning, most people did not wear face masks, where in the afternoon they did wear. And I can combine this data for multiple cameras and these dashboards are not for sending a guard or a police officer to, you know, to, uh, to give tickets to people who don't wear face masks, but mostly to educate them and to know that I'm complying with the regulation. Today, people or stores, businesses, they want to open up after COVID-19. Uh, and they are forced to, uh, to meet uh, the, the mandates or the rules uh, by the authorities. And they need these tools in order to know that they are okay um, and that, that they are indeed meeting uh, the rules and to, to prove to law enforcement and to, uh, and to the government that yes, I'm, I have applied here tools that help me fight with COVID and open up uh, safely. Um, so maybe I'll just show uh, one last dash. Uh, you know what, let's, let's keep the other dashboard. I just want to, sh to, sh to show that uh, those dashboards are coming out of the box. Any user can obviously, um, any user can create a new, a new sheet or just duplicate. Let's, let's, uh, let's uh, pretend that I need to, I want to duplicate and to customize this dashboard here. Uh, so I, then I can just edit it I can just edit it and uh, and continue with the uh, continue with the uh, customization. Um, all right, so a few things that that is are important for me to say. Um, so, Click was the the most flexible BI tool that we have evaluated. Based on that, uh, we we chose uh, to embed it. It was important for us to to reach a high level of integration. During the installation of the of, of the platform, we automatically provision it and con connect it to our product, connect it to our licensing si system, uh, and to clicks licensing named users. There are a lot of integration points that I have not shown, but there are that they are very important. Not just the functional areas here of the product, also a lot of non-functional areas that were important for us and that worked with Click with Click APIs. Um, we integrated it initially in four or five months, I think, the, the, from the start from where we kick, when we kicked off until we launched it. There were four or five uh, months in between, and we worked on it. Uh, we worked hard, uh, but uh, but it uh, but it was uh, a very uh, a very quick experience. Um, so this is what I had to say, and I understand that uh, there are a few questions. Um, so Sivan, would, would you like us uh, to look at the questions? Yes, uh, you can see the questions on the Q&A section. Can you drill down from the charts in the research module to your data and view the actual items filtered like in the review mod module? Or it's just right. so aggregated it's, data? So, so this is a very common question and uh, we have not implemented that yet. Um, it is possible, of course, to get to the review uh, to the review module and to be to, to bring the same video and then apply the same filters and find the objects that you're referring to. Uh, we have not implemented it through Click because the, the context that the user in inside of the BI system is to look at aggregated data and less at uh, specific objects. He's not an in, in, inside an investigation right now. He wants to get the holistic picture when he's uh, inside the research module. Okay, thank you. Next question. What is the size of the app? How many records does it contain? Right, so we, um, we decided strategically to get all of the, a row per object. So when, an, when a person gets into the scene, for us, it's one row of one object inside of Click. We did not aggregate the data as, as customary in, in BI system implementations. Um, we're looking to do that in the future for systems with really a lot of data, uh, but for the purposes that uh, for the purpose that we have here, we we did not aggregate. So we have several hundreds uh, 
uh, of thousands. Um, in some deployments, we have up to tens of, tens of millions of, um, of, of records. But Tomer, just just what just to get make it make it kind of a clear. So theoretically, a user can in the in in that module, the user could go all the way to a single object, like a simple right. person doing right. Yes, because the or because of the way we implemented, we chose right. deliberately to not combine the objects. For example, on just not count during the ETL process all of the objects between eight and nine, and nine and ten, and ten and eleven because we wanted to allow the user the flexibility in drilling down to specific data and to, to slice between men and women and children and color and size, because there are so many dimensions here, we wanted this flexibility and not to combine it because it helps with, um, with uh, it, it, it makes the tool more efficient if you combine it and aggregate it during the ETL process, but it reduces the flexibility. So sure, we thank you. Good choice. Well, thank you. Thank and you. one last question that I can see here is, uh, from Avi Algai, uh, can I filter cars in the videos by typing car numbers? Um, yes. Lic if you mean license plates, uh, let me show you this real, real quick. Uh, and we hold, also have it in research, by the way. Uh, so if I want to, uh, to, uh, to get, an L, uh, get the plates, uh, let's say I'm looking for, uh, let's say I'm looking for a plate that for a plate that ends with 601. I, hope I, have, I have one of those here. Not sure what happened. Uh, I might have been logged out. Let me try again, but the, the answer is yes. And not only yes, inside of the review module, it's also possible to, uh, to, to do this in research. So we are getting the plates into the research module into click and then we can measure and we have an, a, a dashboard that shows, uh, that shows the number of uh, the, the average speeds between two cameras. It's okay. A different one. I'm not sure why it doesn't work today, uh, this time. I'll show it in research. Let's uh, let's bring it up. So I, in the meantime, let me answer the next question. As I see, how did you apply application authentication and content control? Uh, we used Clicks APIs. Um, so our last it was tough in our case because our licensing uh, system is by is for floating users not named users. Any number of users can be, can be um, opened on the system, but we only allow a, handful, a number of, of licensed users uh, to log in concurrently. Uh, but in Click, it's different because it's named. So we had to, we had to be the, uh, a special integration between our system and Clicks. Uh, so the user went in the admin area that I will not show now, um, the admin needs to choose which click name, which named user is allowed uh, to log into Click, which is a professional and which is um, uh, analyzer, right? And then and then they are able to uh, to log in, into the into their uh, designated uh, area. Uh, one that from the previous uh, question, where is the APR traffic violations? Uh, so we are able to detect a license plate on two different cameras, and we know the distance between the cameras. So you can see that we just, we analyze, we calculate the average speeds. So you can see that those are the average speeds um, between, uh, between those two cameras, and it can be filtered down to different, uh, to car or to van or to motorcycle. I can see you can export those, right? Everywhere. You can export this if needed. Exactly, and you can export a list of all of the license plates right? um, into an, 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 Excel, uh, an Excel sheet. And those are, those are all of the different vehicles that I had. This is, these are the license plates and the, and the car, the distance, and then the, the time it entered, uh, the, it, it appeared in the camera, the first camera, the time it appeared in the second camera, and then uh, the calculated uh, the calculated speed. 
Okay, great. Um, thank you, Tomer, for sharing with us your amazing story and the demo. Uh, no doubt uh, we were right uh, to leave you to the end because this was the most important uh, part. Uh, thank you, Pshemek, for your uh, live demo and Ophir for the opening. Um, uh, thank you, everybody, for joining us. Uh, I hope we, we gave you a good time and very interesting uh, things to think about. And we are here for every question. We will send you a link to our YouTube channel, too, to watch the recording for everyone that uh, wants to review it all over again. Um, thank you very much. Thank you. Have a great, Thank you. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Okay. Have a good one. Bye-bye.